<laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Ed. I'm in my armchair, and the smoking lamp is lit. And guess what I'm smoking today? My favorite pipe. Of course, a Stanwell. Because January and February is Stanwell months. I'm smoking them all. And I even got a few extra. So I have 103 now. But who's counting? Right? This is not part of the Sexton Everson um, pipes that I'm trying to collect. But this is a 126 by Tom Eltang. You may have heard of him. He also, besides working for Stanwell, learned a lot about pipe smoking from Sexton Everson. Because Sexton Everson, one of his great accomplishments um, was that he was a teacher. He loved to teach. He loved to let everybody know what he knew. He didn't have, which a lot of pipe makers do have, is they hold back. They don't tell everything they know um, or don't teach at all. He taught and a lot of the Danish carvers came directly from his teachings. This happens to be one. And this is a great little pipe. I love it. Little plateau on the top. Beautiful grain. I don't... You might be able to see it. Look at that. Kind of a flame grain. Beauteous Megamus Maximus. So... As to my, the Stanwell madness, I've smoked all my Stanwells at least once already. And I got the rest of February. And I'm smoking two, three a day. How I got to smoking all of them was I love the Stanwell pipes, the Danish pipes. So I found myself... I decided I was going to have it smoked at least two each day to get through all of them. But I found myself uh, smoking four, five bowls a day, all with Stanwells. So I was able to finish them all off relatively quick. And now I'm just picking them out, having a great old time. Because, yeah, I just, all of those pipes... I didn't have one that is like, oh, this is ridiculous. There was a few that were eBay finds that had a, needed a lot of work. But it was pretty good. So continuing to stand well, by the end of February, I will have smoked all of the pipes that I um, have for a solid year of pipe madness that was my goal gotta like it so the reason for this video is a vr to hobbiton piper he's having a giveaway and he's asking a question of beside youtube and some of the typical stuff, where do you go to learn about pipe smoking? Now this giveaway, I really have no chance of winning because Hobbiton won, well, you probably everybody got to know Hobbiton. If you haven't, man, you got to check it out. But he has already like 100,000 subscribers ridiculous number 
and he's started after me. And I have at least 13, 14 subscribers at least. But that means that there's probably about, there's thousands of people that rang this goal. What are the odds? But I'll give it a try. Cause Doc and I need more pipes. <laughs> yeah, I, I quack myself up. <laughs> so to answer Kevin's question, let's take advantage of the fact that I've been smoking for 53 years now. Forget what's going on now. YouTube, you have a lot of stuff you could learn through YouTube, a lot more. Um, just social, you know, things. Um, let's go back to how I started. My first pipe I got was in the Navy. Um, four or 18 years old. Started smoking a pipe, bought a few more, got out of the Navy, went to college. Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado. After that, I got a job right in Fort Collins and close to where I worked, I mean, basically across the parking lot in the street was an Edwards tobacco shop. Now, before that, yeah, I'd been to a few tobacco shops, but mainly I still bought the, you know, the um, tobaccos, um, pork and whiff was my favorite during those days. You know, the over-the-counter, I just got those, yes, looked out a few of the tobaccos, you know, and their house blends and stuff. But pretty well stuck with that until I started going to Edwards. And that's where I learned about house blends, bulk blends. And in there we had a guy that I got to know just because I kept going in. Um, he taught me about it. So we, I took a whiff of pretty much every tobacco he, he had open. Um, and I started buying some of the house blends. I hate to say it, I do not remember what they were, um, but that was the last time I bought, you know, the, the standard blend, the Barkham Riff, you know, over a counter. I, through him, learned how to smell this stuff, test them out. I would buy a few samples of his um, he also taught me a lot about how to pack a pipe, a lot of stuff. I've been, and I've been smoking about eight years, seven years, eight years. I, um, you know, got a better look at the different shapes and stuff. Yeah, I bought a pipe from him. Um, I think I bought a basket pipe too. But I learned a lot. I just kept going in. In those days, Edward's back, and of course, the smoking laws, they were allowed to just give you a bowl's worth so you can test out a blend. Um, and his counter was really like a bar. And it had some stools in it, on it. Buy it. <laughs> um, and you can sit down on the stool, smoke a tobacco, if they wanted to try. He would tell you a little bit more about different 
um, pipes and everything. I learned a lot from that guy going to a brick and mortar. So that's my suggestion. This is what I recommend. Again, now there's obviously not as many brick and mortars. In fact, um, I don't have any really close to me. I mean, the last one I was ever in that had pipes and pipe tobacco was uh, early last year, or actually I think it was in February, or December 20, um, or 2020, 2020, yeah. Um, Boswell's um, had a meetup from, you know, recommended by Beans, met a lot of people there. And that was the first time I'd been into brick and mortar since I retired and moved out to Pennsylvania. Everything around me is cigar shops. And a few that did have attempt at pipes when I first moved here, didn't have a good selection, really didn't have too good of a blend, but I would try a few, have gotten rid of their pipes and then the tobaccos. So everything around me for quite a few miles is cigar shops. So what used to be cigar and pipes, now just cigars. But that, um, yeah, I, don't, I have to go online to buy stuff. Of course, I buy a lot of stuff from eBay because my hobby has started to be to, you know, refurbish used pipes. Pretty much all of my Stanwells, you know, are really in estate sale pipes. And I just cleaned them up, refurbished, restained if need be. In fact, uh, just a couple days ago, I completely fixed a, um, a hole in my, in my stem. It was right there at the button. And, um, you know, I actually had to fix that because there was a hole coming through it. <laughs> so anyway, so here's what I'm about to say. Hold on a second. So here is my suggestion. Go to, if you can, a brick and mortar. When you go, allow yourself a little more time than you think you need to, and start talking to these guys. Start buying stuff through brick and mortars. These guys, most of them really know their stuff. And when you have a chance to learn from them, Oh, that's just amazing. We can't let the brick and mortar, the art of the brick and mortar, the knowledge of the brick and mortar and their people go away. Now I started out, I mean, I have a legacy in the sense that my grandfather smoked a pipe. He was definitely an old codger, <laughs> you know. He got his stuff from this corner market. I'm not sure what pipes, but I'm sure that they were all inexpensive ones, just behind the counter, picked your pipe. I know that his um, main uh, blend was Prince Albert. My dad smoked a pipe. When I first started smoking a pipe, he was more into the cigars but he had some pipes, which I got now. So I had a good legacy, but still, that manager, that owner, the workers 
of that brick and mortar. We got to arrange to not let them die out. And there's, with the laws getting worse and worse, there's a lot of stuff you can't do, but you certainly can support them, but you can also learn from them. Go in, as I said, go in there with a little extra time so that you can just talk to people. Believe me, everyone I've ever known at a brick and mortar is a talker, <laughs> you know. You ask the questions, they will be loved. They will love to teach you, show you. Again, a lot more restrictions. No longer can they give you a bowl's worth to try. Um, there's all kinds of laws and stuff that they can't do is like to some of them almost, you know, can't just don't have a counter where you just sit there and smoke your pipe. But that's who you got to learn from. Take advantage of those people. Any hui. This is it for now. I hope you like this. And if you did, like. And also remember, if you don't like, you're not going to get to heaven. So may your smoking lamp always be lit. And take care out there.